Hello, welcome to episode 207 of the Epic Film Challenge to A Thousand and One Movies You Must See Before You Die. It's uh, hard to wipe the smile off my face now that I'm done with the movie that shall not be named in the previous episode. And I can now talk about something that's actually interesting and good. Uh, Hexen, uh, Witchcraft Through the Ages from 1922. A Danish film uh, produced with the help of Sweden, but it was uh, made by a Danish filmmaker named Benjamin Christensen, who was a bit of a renaissance man. He directed films, he starred in films, I think he was a singer at one point too. And he also stars in this film as the devil, uh, Satan himself, in a very tonguey performance. If you've seen the film, you know what I'm talking about. It's constantly just flicking his tongue out uh, in a very creepy and captivating kind of way, I think. Hexen is a film of its own genre. It's really an oddity of the silent era. This was a, a time period where documentary wasn't really a genre yet. It wasn't, uh, I mean, you can look at the earliest films ever from the 18, 80s and 90s and say that those are documentaries because they're just clips of, of everyday things. So they're documenting real life. But to construct a film, a feature length film, to inform an audience or to focus on a particular subject was not exactly a known genre at the time. We had Nanook of the North around that time. Uh, they were filming stuff in the Antarctic for kind of the, the ice documentaries of the period too, which I guess Nanook of the North would fall under as well, but it was still very much in its infancy and narrative filmmaking was the absolute kind of pinnacle of what cinema could achieve at that time. It was, you know, it was a flight of fancy. It was taking you on a, a journey, uh, you know, much like the stage could do and had done for hundreds of years before that. So it was really untested waters and what Benjamin Christensen did was he didn't just make a documentary, he made something more than that. And to me, Hexen is, it's not a documentary, it's not a horror film, it's not a drama, it's not a comedy and yet it has elements of all four of those things and ultimately I feel like, I, I'm, I'm disappointed to say, I feel like it doesn't quite work. But I love the creativity that went into this film. Uh, Benjamin Christensen spent three years heavily researching everything he wanted to uh, tell with this film. In terms of witchcraft, it is an examination of witchcraft and uh, superstition, I think. And it goes into the history of the Middle Ages and what happened to quote-unquote witches when they were discovered. And he draws comparisons and parallels between uh, the contemporary world of, of 1921 to 1922. And I like that a lot. The opening segments of the film I adored. I absolutely loved them. The, the very first part of the film kind of uh, gives you a bit of a introduction to the style of the film. You know, the intertitles are, you know, you can assume that they're written from his perspective and he's guiding us through the movie and he, he tells us these things and, and, and quotes from books or says, you know, we, we learn from this scholar that this is something that happened and then we'll see an old painting or an old kind of drawing like a, the kind of um, the wood cuttings and you'll see like a, a pen kind of, you know, highlighting the areas you're supposed to be looking at and see, see here this is where the witch is being drowned. It's really interesting and I loved that stuff. There's also a section where he goes into how the ancient Egyptians viewed the universe. Uh, and how at some point, you know, many hundreds and hundreds of years ago, humans thought that the world was uh, obviously flat, but also encompassed by giant mountains on all sides of the earth. And that uh, on top of those mountains were steel pillars that held the sky up and stars were held up by strings. And he, he builds this elaborate model of this, this village in a valley to kind of, in a very exaggerated sense, show us that kind of, a visual idea of what they believed uh, the, the the galaxy or you know, the what well, what Earth was like, but also there's like this uh, diagram of what they thought the galaxy was and Earth being different layers of things and what the stars were, like really interesting stuff. I mean, I could have watched a whole movie about those kinds of things, but then he goes into these like narrative segments where it's like an actual film and we're following a story of a witch being accused of being a witch or a woman being accused of being a witch. And it delves into, you know, how, in modern day, at the time of this film's release, you know, someone who is seen as eccentric or someone who has maybe mental issues, that would be a surefire, you know, reason for people in the Middle Ages to say, well, that's a witch. You know, uh, old people who, you know, maybe are going through dementia and stuff, they're put in a home in, in modern day. But back then, if, if there was an old person who looked a little haggard and had some mental issues and, and didn't really make much sense, hey, it must be a witch. 
and all the kind of and again he, he heavily researched this it's so interesting that this is kind of uh, historical fact at least the stuff that's been written down and, and documented and stuff all the kind of ways that people society would uh, come up with reasons to confirm whether this person was a witch or not you know just absolute just again just very debatable methods where it's you know oh well there's there's these invisible marks surely she must be a witch and they'll they literally they would torture these women until they confessed to something that was untrue just to kind of stop the torture uh, and then they would blame other people and then the circle would continue and then more people would get accused and the superstition plays into it and also uh, he, he delves into the fact that witchcraft is very much seen as a real thing and that things like you know satan and uh, demons and the devil were all very much viewed completely literally by people back then and they took it so seriously that any hint of a witch would be something to jump on and, and get them thrown on a stake and, and I mean it's, it's very shocking it seems tame now the film some of the things that it shows there's a scene where a baby is put in a pot to boil obviously you can tell it's a doll but the the idea of it is quite extreme and this was quite uh, an extreme movie for its time uh, the the censor board hadn't quite been you know the code era hadn't begun yet and so there was nudity in the film there was these gothic images and you know depictions of the devil and so on so it was kind of controversial, but also a big success. Uh, like I said, it feels very uneven. It was quite a slog to get through. I watched um, many years ago James Rolfe's Monster Madness series, the first one, I think, the History of Horror. And he covered this film and, and said how great it was in terms of the visuals, but he found it quite hard to get through in terms of all the, the intertitles, the, the writing that kind of breaks up the flow of the film. Uh, and I was thinking that when I watched that, his review of the film, I thought, ah, amateur. You know, at this point, I feel like I'm somewhat of a veteran of watching silent films. You know, I've seen a five-hour silent film, a six-hour, a seven-hour silent film, you know, over the course of one day. And so I feel like I'm pretty well equipped to have the patience to watch these kinds of films. And this one's only an hour and 45 minutes. It's a standard-length film, but I find it so hard to get through because of how truncated it feels, because of how uneven the segments feel. You know, it'd be end of part four, and then we just continue with the same part we were watching, and that was a little bit confusing why that was even there. Uh, you know, we go from the, the documentary-style pieces to the narrative pieces, and, and the, they, they don't really feel nicely matched together at times. And so I just found it really hard to concentrate, and, uh, and some of the things I didn't quite get. But there were these touches that I loved. There were moments where he would very much kind of... Uh, just completely break the fourth wall and say, you know, okay, these are some of the torture devices used on witches and, and nuns and so on and so forth. And one of my actresses was so keen that she insisted she try one of these devices. And then we see like a behind the scenes shot of her having this thumb thing applied. She's like, ow, ow, you know. Uh, so I, I love those moments where he very much just kind of pulls the, the curtain back and, and allows us into the world of the making of the film in, in, in very small segments. I like that stuff. And the visuals. Uh, the star of the show, you know, just incredible production design. This is the most expensive uh, Scandinavian film ever made in the silent era. I saw the first ever Norwegian silent film recently, and that was very bare bones. You could tell the budget was low on that one, but here, and that's why he went to, to Sweden, a Swedish production company, to get this film made, because he could have a big budget, creative control, and, you know, he spent three years researching this and uh, many months making this, and the sets are just great. The production design is fantastic, but also the um, the lighting is fantastic. The use of close-ups on some of these characters. Uh, Maria the Weaver was probably the most memorable part of the film. This old woman who there's something about old people who have no teeth, you know, where th th their mouths go in a little bit and their their cheeks go in a little bit, and there's just something so gaunt about their appearance that it's kind of uh, disgusting, but you you can't look away at the same time, and it really adds to performances when that happens. And he talks about how the the actress who played this character. Lean, looked over to him while filming and said that uh, you know there was a devil by my bedside you know and he shows that clip of her looking over to him and speaking to him you know uh, behind the camera so this is really eerie moments like that and some of there's like model work you know uh, some special effects with witches flying across the sky and stuff some unforgettable imagery but overall I do feel like the film just uh, it bites off more than it can chew in terms of trying to be its own unique thing and it doesn't quite make for a cohesive viewing experience. But I still enjoyed it quite a bit and I would like to revisit it at a later date. I know in the 60s they revamped this film. Uh, it was about 70 minutes long so they cut off some, some of the running time by about half an hour. 
and they added uh, a voiceover. I'm intrigued to check that one out and see if it plays better without the, the very staggered uh, intertitles, which all silent films have, but I suppose in this film there's a lot of information and it, it, it is a lot of text to read through. But that wasn't really a problem for me, I don't think. It was mainly just the uh, the flow of it that felt a bit, you know, uneven. I've just come back to that word, uneven. So, is Hexen a film you should see before you die? I think it is. I certainly learned a few things that I find really interesting. And again, he paints that parallel of, you know, uh, how things were perceived in modern times back to the Middle Ages and how, you know, being a bit different could very well have cost you your life back in the Middle Ages and just how it was, you know... It was just anything goes, like crazy stuff, you know, just torture and, and death and horrific, you know. And we know these things, but it was interesting the way he kind of connected that thread between, you know, women being hysterical in modern times and then that being seen as a sign of witchcraft in the Middle Ages and that being a, a reason for your death, basically, which is uh, quite a horrifying thing. So as far as a horror film goes, I think it actually does quite a good job, but again, it... it it's, it's pulling from all these different genres, uh, and I like some of the special effects. I love some of the special effects, in fact. But, uh, you know, I don't think it's a great film, but I think it's one worth seeing, uh, just for the visuals alone, and, and maybe you won't find the, uh, the structure of it as jarring as I did. And I'm looking forward to going back to it. I hope they release a Blu-ray of this. I think I'd love to see it in high definition. I watched it on Filmstruck, and it looked really good there, but I, I, I really want to see a high definition transfer of this, and... Uh, my opinion could change. The music I didn't like at times, that played into it too. There's some really like, again, just gothic imagery and the music's very upbeat and light and it just didn't match at all. And I was like, oh, well, that's, that's the danger when you do music, you know, eight years after a film came out and uh, it's not the original music. But apparently there was a, a note in the credits that says this was based on the music that was played during this film's premiere. So there we go. That, that speaks to some of it. But yeah, I think the music a little bit jarring again with the images, images at times. There are moments that are upbeat in the film. There's not many, but there's a few of them, and those could have had that those pieces of music, and then the more gothic kind of dark moments of the film could have brought the kind of music down a bit and really dug deep into some kind of um, feeling that would just evoke more out of the, the images than the upbeat music that was played during some of those sequences. So there we go. It is, it is a film you should see before you die. I was incredibly impressed with the ambition of it more than anything. I just thought it was so cool to see someone really just pushing the, the limits of what cinema could be in that period uh, in, in film history because there's not a lot of documentaries from that time period and the ones that are are very straightforward and this is anything but straightforward. Ultimately I don't think it works completely and certainly doesn't hold up but there's certainly merit to be had there, and uh, I, I will watch it again for sure. And my opinion could change. You know, it could be it just could have been the frame of mind when I watched it. That's that's another thing I'm willing to kind of, you know, take on board. That could t totally be a reason, but it's certainly not a write-off. It's it's a very good film and worth watching. So leave me your thoughts down below if you've seen Hexen, what you think of it, and I'll see you in the next video.